Woo! It is Saturday, and today we're going up. We're off to a little bit of a late start, but that's okay. Um, we're still going. We'll be back tonight, um, and then back in the woods tomorrow again uh, with, uh, well, well, hopefully with Sh Sean and Apollo. We'll see. It's rainy. We've got some exciting places to go to. We're going to collect about um, we're probably going to collect about 12 different cards today on a loop that is, uh, it'll be about seven miles. So we're going to have a full day in front of us. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Uh, Calamity was so excited. I had my uh, camo on before I fed her and she wouldn't eat. She's just jumping around, whining and everything. We're in the car now. She's still whining. She is ready to go. We have a big day in front of us. Uh, I'm sure all the batteries are dead. These haven't been visited for several months. We've had a lot of rain and a lot of snow, and hopefully we'll find a lot of animals. So stay tuned. Here we go. Thanks for watching Trail Camera Adventures, John and Calamity Jane. So this is a great day because Calamity is over a year now and she's able to work out in front of me a whole lot better. And we've also, we've got this new 33 foot trailing lead so I can let her get out there and be way out in front of me and not tripping underneath my legs. I've also got this um, this wrist loop that was custom put into it. Really appreciate Colin at Red River Canine putting this thing together for me. If you only use biothane and you've never used a high quality round leather like this, you may be missing out. Yeah, they're more expensive. And yeah, they eventually, in really inclement weather, like we have here in the Northwest, they can, uh, they can get wet and deteriorate and stuff. And even when you are oiling and everything, I don't think people in drier um, environments understand or appreciate that at all. But I could care less just buy new so now she can get out there and stay out from underneath my feet and i love it absolutely love it and she's a whole lot more daring now she's not shy at all she's working all the scents a lot of fun going with the bloodhound she kind of understands her new her new space which is 33 feet and then some because of my arm yeah gets a little taut i got a pinch collar on there it basically tells her to slow down dad doesn't want to get jerked and we're figuring it out see how she looks back like that she knows this is her new distance she's enjoying it too yeah, good spacing. Way better for me. Way better. Look at her face right into the wind. See what she could smell. Pretty cool. So the wind is coming up from behind us. She turned right around. Look at that. There's something she just caught wind of. Oh yeah. There's something. You can see the fog, how it's coming up. She was just working up this, this road. All of a sudden it hit her and she spun right around. Like, what was that? Oh yeah. There was definitely something down there, wasn't there? Good girl. Dog handlers know this. She will uh, be ponging back and forth from one side of the road to the other and pick up scent because the scent collects, stops on this foliage and, uh, well, it's stuck. And so she'll pick that up and she'll work this side for a while 
And then uh, if she's got something, she'll stay there. But if not, she goes looking for something else like she's probably doing right now. She'll pong over to the other side. And I say pong because it reminds me of that, that pong game. And then she'll work that side for a while. See what she comes up with. And then if nothing happens, occasionally he'll come up, do a little air scenting. Yeah, I got nothing, Dad. Nothing interesting. She'll keep working it, working it, working it. At one year now, she's really using her nose a lot. More than the whole first year. And we we're kidding around. Some of it maybe because <laughs> She's got so much skin on her face now, she can't see, so gotta use the nose. I think it's a timing thing. I think most, most bloodhounds are really get into it after one year old. She's not done with this side. Look at that, doing some air scenting. Might have got something interesting there. Gonna go down a little more. Something down there in that valley. Could you imagine if we humans had scents like this? Had the ability to do that? Okay, she's done checking it out. Hi, we'll work our way back up. Snake Valley, here you see this. A lot, of, a lot of people know what this is. It's commonly referred to as buckbrush. And buckbrush is found, you know, a lot over in Idaho, mostly on the west side. Most of the stuff that we have on this side of the mountain is salal, which is an ivy that can grow up on top of each other this high. But this particular um, valley is full of buckbrush only. All that green that you see over there, that's all buckbrush. Well, there's some three-year-old uh, evergreen trees in there, fir trees too, but it's all buckbrush, which is interesting. So what a friend and I have theorized is when they came in here years ago with the trucks to clear it out, they must have dropped a bunch of buckbrush and it just grew up. And I, I'm talking maybe over a 30 year time period because we've been, we've been going up here that long and it, it was here, but not obviously as big as it is now. You look at all the other canyons around here and it's Salau. This is the only buckbrush area. Something to that. So I'm going to need to do something about this custom. You see how the um, the weight of the carabiner and the pinch collar it works its way down to underneath her neck, and then it ends up going through her legs. Now, there's one <laughs> positive part of this. It kind of slows her down. But I don't like seeing her dance around on the lead and everything. So I think if I twist it around on top, that's a very light carabiner. And then I uh, put some kind of mm, threading mechanism through the top of her, her vest. It'll stay up there. So I'm going to have to monkey with that at home and see what I can come up with. So she's not dancing around like that. That looks a little silly. So the uh, fog is starting to lift and we're up high enough to where we're looking out over Swift Reservoir. And this area with the exception of just a little trickle that was going through there, there, was, there wasn't any water in it. The lake was really low probably at least a half mile out there doing repairs on the dam and stuff like that. It's nice to see the water come up. Hopefully it'll be at a nice, uh, safe level to um, 
this spring so everybody could go out and fish and boat and and uh, really enjoy the lake like we think we should. Pretty nice, huh, Calamity? Yeah, you're just taking it all in from here, aren't you? Good girly. So we're coming up on a spot that a cougar was ambushing us. I was setting a trail camera right on that tree right there. So on clear days, we could get Mount St. Helens in the background. And Sean and K9 Wyatt and Apollo were standing right up here. And the dogs were really making a ruckus. And, uh, but they were both pointed in the same direction. And so Sean looks up and right up there, this mountain lion was waiting and checking us out right there. So you can see what a perfect ambush area all along this, this uh, roadside and this berm is. That would be an easy leap for any cougar to come down and get a deer or elk or who knows what. It's just a great spot. So I always pay particular attention <laughs> to this spot. Any, <clears throat> anywhere along here would be a good ambush spot on this high side for a cougar. So we're going to stay on guard. Got lots of trail camera videos of big toms in this area. So we're just going to stay on guard and get by it. Oh, I hear the grouse. The grouse are going. It's that time of year. So see this grassy area that she's down in? Also see how it's all like mowed down? She went right down in there because that's where all the, the deer and the elk, they're going in there and they're grazing on all that fresh grass. And of course it pulled her right down in there. She wanted to see what that was all about. And it's a good learning opportunity for me to show you. There's not a lot of spots like this, but this is a really good one. And the deer and elk target those, at least until it gets green everywhere. Good girl. Thanks for showing me that. Okay, this is interesting. See that? That is a tunnel that the dirt was pushed up when there was snow here and the voles which looks like a little tiny mouse they travel underneath and in these uh in these tunnels so that's that's what does that this is a pretty active area yeah and up in an area that i i'm gonna put a a trail camera in it it might not be obvious why so I'm going to talk about it. This, see this, it's at a high point, and there's this single tree that's been here uh, standing out. Look at how she's going right over to it. The single tree that's been here for, oh, it, it lasted through the clear cut. And the elk and deer always seem to go by the tree. Look, there's some elk scat right there, and it's definitely one that they you know that they rub on so i've always been tempted to put a trail camera on it it's just a matter of getting the right angle i'm not quite sure how to do it i need to find a taller stump around here and and do it okay i got it set up on this low stump and it's looking out over this area We'll see what comes by. Just gotta turn it on now. And hopefully we get some good stuff off of it. There we go. Looks like it might be aimed up a little bit. So I'm gonna, this is a, pretty common trick. I'm going to 
put that stick in there. And I didn't use one of my metal prongs because this thing wouldn't hold it. So in this case, it works out really good. And I need to put it, since this is a new place, I need to put it on my onyx. So we found some bones. Looks like a, a bull elk didn't make it. Oh, are you eating the bone too, huh? You eating the cracked open bone? Let's see. You like bones, huh? Oh yeah. Oh, you want that big one? You wanna carry that with you? Okay. All right, that can be your trophy. <laughs> Good girl. Well, it's not much of a shed, but it's definitely part of one. Oh, you like it? You you like it, huh? So we're officially on the board for finding a deadhead and a shit. <laughs> oh, you like it, huh? Okay, I'm gonna put it in my bag. We'll keep it for you, okay? We will keep it for you. All right, you like it, don't you? <laughs> Okay, we've um, deployed another new one here on this tree. And the idea behind this one is it's right along the edge of a clear cut. And I've had some in this area before and the predators, especially bobcats, have worked their way right along here. But it's also right through there is the opening to the clear cut where most of the deer and elk come through. In fact, it looks like the elk have been bedding here. Look how it's all torn up. Definitely a bedding area. And when we got in here, she was just going nuts, snorting the whole area up. So this time of year, this particular spot um, should be new. And I've got an angle. The only problem with this is the sun comes up over there. But, um, you know, I've stopped worrying about the sun too much because it really um, can make for some fabulous video if it's foggy or it's just trickling through. I don't usually have the runaways anymore. Oh, you're ready to go, huh? Feisty, feisty. Okay, so this one is off and going. You can see this is the camera that the cougar chewed up and broke. I've just got, um, I turned it on and I've, uh, I'm using Velcro double-sided tape to, uh, it still works to keep it close. So we'll see what this one brings here in two, three weeks. So everywhere we go in here, this forest is torn up with uh, hoof prints. The elk have been, this is definitely a yard area for the elk. It's just torn up everywhere and she's, she's going nuts. You see how it's all messed up there. and. There was so much up there. We're getting really close to the water source where we got a few cameras. And uh, anyway, it's amazing how many animals have been in here. This is definitely a good spot. Well, there's an interesting tree formation right there. Okay. Well, I see something interesting already right by the water hole. See that tree to the right? You see how all the, the bark is just all cleared off? That's probably from so many squirrels going up and down, but it might not be. There's a, a trail camera right next to it, so we're going to find out. We're going to find out what it is. There should be at least one other trail camera on this water hole working. Oh, you are ready. She powered right down into it, right down into the water. Okay, you've had all your shots, but I don't want you in there. I really don't. Right. So you can see how this is just all... It's actually peeled. Peeled all the way up there. I'm not quite sure what did that. Maybe the squirrel. There's a trail camera. Hopefully it's working right over there. It would have got it. And then there's one right over here. And there's a noisy pup right there. 
Good girl. You just wait while daddy does this. Okay, let me point out why this is such a good spot. This is the primary reason. It is year-round water. It is always water. I can see elk, elk, um, but everything uses this. Um, we've got um, it's, it's actually bubbling up. This is where it starts. In the heavy rains and snow melt off, it comes down here, but it, it's constantly coming out of the earth right here. So all year long, even in the hottest months, this is here. Um, it's also protected. It's a protected um, area. Um, if you're down here low, taking a drink, um, you can actually see. So um, in case you're a a predator or animal, like if you're a deer or you're a, um, an elk, um, it's not that bad to get a drink. It's also one of the highest points around here. It's very, very close. Even though it's in this little this little valley, it's at a very high point um, on this smaller mountain here. So great area. Love this place. Did you think you needed a walking stick? Huh? Is that what you thought? You thought you needed a walking stick? Boy, is she working hard now. She really smells something. Come on, let's go. So take a look at this log. See all the moss, all the moss, all the moss. Is that obvious or what? This is a major trail. Major trail. Look at her. Moss, moss, moss. They all go over right here. Which tells me I should put a trail camera up here. I think I've got one left in my backpack. So this would be a brand new area. Let's do it. I think maybe if I put it, I like it, I like it. I'm gonna put it on this tree right here. Yeah, that's gonna be a, it's gonna be a good spot. Tie her up right over here. Come on. Are you trying to trip me, huh? Well, I don't know about this one. Look at that. That's what happens a lot of times when you run your cameras in the winter. You get great stuff, but you also lose a few cameras because uh, there's nothing you can do about condensation. You can have weep holes at the bottom that it leaks out, which that's not a weep hole, that's for the accessory. Oh my goodness, it's still going, that's good. Maybe we got something on there. Okay, well, we will keep her going, even though it's fogged up. I don't have one to replace it with right now. Set. And we're ready. Oh, it's a foggy day. Okay. Are you ready for your breakfast burrito? So this is pretty neat. Um, driving up to go get our trail cameras I noticed in the bushes off the power canal the there's a whole bunch of uh, elk 
bedded down. You can't see them very well, but I pulled around and I pulled out my compact spotting scope. This is a, and I backed it all the way back to 17 power and I found them in there. And now with my phone, I have this adapter that I can put on there. There we go. And I can zoom right in. Focus it. Even through the limbs, I've got to get it on the, uh, <laughs> got to get it on the elk. This is challenging with all those limbs and everything. And now just video. How cool is that? There she is. <laughs> the phone is really challenged because on the focal point because there's so many branches and everything, but I can still get in there and keep adjusting it and get some video. Pretty nice, there's another one. I'm gonna back out a little bit. There's another one back up there. See that? You can just barely see the tail. That big white butt. <laughs> pretty neat compact spotting scope um, iPhone and the phone adapter and boom there you go I had almost taken off and I saw down in the beaver pond these two cormorants And I got them just in time. They're about ready to take off. And they're disappearing in behind the trees. Amazing how fast things can happen right in front of you. You have to be, oh, the one's coming back over. I'm gonna get it right here. Okay, this is really challenging. I moved the truck back and I've got a little bit of an opening. And both of them got on that log there and they're preening themselves. Pretty neat. Oh, here comes Sean. He caught up to us. Isn't that really cool? So all I gotta do is push this button, line it up. And now we're videoing them through my phone and also we're having challenges with the these trees up here so the phone keeps moving its focal point back and forth between the bird and the other pretty neat all right well everybody's excited <laughs> We're trying to video here. We got Sean getting Apollo out. <laughs> and Calamity just noticed that Apollo's here. So we've got so much going on. And then there's some elk back in the trees. How fun is this? Another adventure. Okay, we're back to a really cool spot. This is right off the road. It's a swamp that everybody can see on the way up to our cabin. There's a creek that goes through here. And from time to time, you'll see the elk. And especially this time of year, look at this crystal clear creek. There are some fish in there. And so what happens this time of year is the, um, the swamps are the first ones to get green. And these swamps that have this skunk 
cabbage. See this yellow flowering tuber that's coming up? The elk love it. They just snip it off. Now you can see they've been in here. You see all the elk track, tracks? Beautiful. Oh yeah, they've been in here. And this is, this is where most of them will be. So we set a camera two weeks ago right on that tree there. Oh, they've been in here good. They, when we set that camera, the tubers weren't really coming up yet. So, so the elk weren't in here, but look at this now. Look at this now. You can see how they come right over there. This is the easiest path. What's interesting, I've noticed, is they haven't been nipping off the tubers. Usually they're all clipped off. See how close we are to the road. There's our camera. And the elk usually come right past where Sean's coming in. Come in here. Elk. 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 Looks like that one was nipped on a little bit. And they call this skunk cabbage because it kind of stinks. <laughs> All right. Here we go. A new browning camera. I love these cameras. Obviously, the, it's only been a couple weeks and batteries are still good. So this is going to be exciting to see what's on here. Look how fancy Apollo is with your new coat. My goodness. Oh, we're not helping any, are we? Are you turning on lights? Yeah, I am. Oh, it's lit. You have lights? Oh, my goodness sakes. Well, we're going to have to talk about that jacket after we settle down a little bit. All right, it's Sunday fun day and uh, we made it out again. We're going up, 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 1,500, 2,000 feet. I did this yesterday, so I'm really feeling it today. We've got Sean and Apollo with us. Hey, everybody. This uh, wide angle lens, I can get everybody in here. And the dogs are excited. They are really talking. Yeah, their Swift Reservoir in the background, it is filling up. It is filling. In fact, driving up here, I noticed there was uh, uh, wood debris and everything in there now from all the water and stuff coming down all the creeks. So, anyway, Sunday, sun day, yeah, fun day. Here we go. Classic bloodhound working the low points. <laughs> there you go. Forward. Calamity are so much bigger than a year ago. <laughs> you were just a little squirt. There they go. Now they're getting out in front of us. Like a couple of pack mules. Look at that view. Whoop. Oh my goodness. Come here. Sorry about that. <laughs> I didn't expect that. I do think I videoed it though. <laughs> what a view. Yeah, that water is definitely coming up. If you have a bloodhound, you'll know this. Every single low point drainage, gotta check it out. That's where all the smells go. Sometimes the animals are in there. Calamity hasn't had anything come darting out yet, but. That's classic bloodhound behavior right there. Go check out those low points. So I had two or three cameras down in this forest. That I thought I had pulled them all and I asked Sean and Apollo to go down there and have, have uh, Apollo just kind of sweep the area. And sure enough, he found one. So he's got a camera. He's bringing it up. He's got a camera that, uh, did you bring the peg too? Good that's been down there for all winter. 
It'll be exciting to see what's on there. Good job, Apollo. Yes. Good job. It's kind of nice to have a trail camera search dog. Yay. Yay. Look at that. Yeah, you got a trophy. Okay, that's enough. That's enough. Let's see. Let's see the trophy. There it is. Here, so, oh, it's not even fogged up either. Come here, bud. All right. Boy, he is really gritting that area. Nice recall. Well done. So I'm gonna set a camera up here and I think I'm gonna tie her up to it right now. I'm not gonna put it on the tree, but across from the tree. This is obviously a pretty good sized rub area. I think that's an elk, but we'll put it right here. And you can see where calamity is. That's gonna be a great area. If whatever it is, come back. Something will come through here for sure. You can see the trail that goes right along there, so. Okay, gotta screw this in right here. Right across from the rub. The calamity's tied to. You can see there's a clear cut. We're in the forest on the edge. And right along there is the trail. So this should be a good spot. All right, so let's get this camera on there. Setup mode, it's all ready to go. I set it up at home. Good. There we go. So now it is time to count damage. Screw it down. Oop, all the way to the end of the thread. So I'm going to back up just a little bit and then use this thing underneath here snug and so it's snug up against the camera so it doesn't move around too much. Check it one more time. Okay, so that's set mode. And then that is on mode. So we are good to go. Okay, we've got two cameras. One right there, and the other one is right over there on this side. And then across the creek, there's another one. I can see it right now. It's actually been, there's two more. That one's been turned, the other one is straight. So we got four cameras on this creek crossing. The reason I have so many is because it's just such a great place. It's beautiful. We've got everything, well, mountain lions, the um, calf elk like to wallow and play around down here, so it makes for some great video. 
so um, pretty slippery and wet down here let's see how many of these little bit of condensation it's been in here for quite a long time I'll be surprised if the battery is still working. Well, first one, whoop, we will see. Okay, keep your fingers crossed. Oh, wow, spider webs. Boy, that's, oh, look at all the water come out. Oh my gosh. That's never really a good sign. But uh, maybe if you turn it off and turn it back on oh feels like it's rusted no we, we got nothing oh no there's a little blink there so oh yeah it's working son of a gun wow we may have something here yeah I'll turn it back off Whew. that's great there we go. there's some fresh running water There you go. No, don't want to drink? I thought you would. This one here, ideally, will get all the playtime in the creek. This one here, will get everything coming down. And then of course, we've got those two on the other side. So we pretty much got this creek crossing covered and it is the main crossing area. So any animals traveling east to west along this, whew, this forested uh, edge of a clear cut, they're probably gonna go through here. Well, this camera is fairly sheltered and at an angle. So I don't think Oh, spider. <laughs> I don't think we're going to have water problems, but we're going to find out. No, no water dripping out. That's always a good sign. Turn it off. Turn it back on to test. Come on, batteries. No, so we got, we got dead batteries. Not a surprise. All right, it is time to refuel. <laughs> and we got sunshine, which is awesome. Hi, I know, guess what? It's time to pull out your breakfast burrito. Yeah. You like to have your breakfast burrito? Come here. There we go. There we go. Okay, so i got her right at the end of her leash. She can't get much farther. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> hang on. All right. So, okay. Are you ready for this? How about I give it to you first? <laughs> I'll give it to you. There you go. You got yours first, so you should be good. We got some for you too, if you like. We have it in thirds. Here we go. So. Apollo and Sean get some, and no, the rest is daddy's. Mm. You wailed on that. You got it? There you oh, go. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> this is definitely refueling too. Okay, so we have, all right, settle down. We have a whole pot, sit. Come here, sit. So, oh, sit. We know the sit. We have a whole Here you go, Calamity. It's turkey jerky, won't hurt her. Here you go, Calamity. Oh. So we have a whole pocket full of cards that we collected. Sit, <laughs> sit, sit. Oh, I know. Oh, you don't want it. You're still chewing. Sit, sit, mm. sit. There you go. Now daddy gets his. Oh, the sun came out. The first time the sun has come out in a couple weeks. When we were up here <laughs> yesterday, it rained like heck on us. So if you're wondering what's going on with my hands, <laughs> this is from the gloves, the dye from the gloves. When it gets wet, it comes out. No. Uh, so you got any any pro 
canine trips today for us. Sip. <laughs> Sip. Now would be a good time. Yeah, we're getting there. All right. Um, Apollo's rocking. I saved the card. Of course, I put it in the pocket that's the most inaccessible. Mm. Sit. Mm. It's a spotlight dog vest, and when you're out in foliage like this, having your dog, even a lighter colored dog, in a high vis vest is absolutely critical. Especially if you have him off leash and you're looking for grouse sheds and trail cams which he did find a trail cam by he the did. way that was pretty cool he but uh, it's a spotlight right. vest um again easy fit easy easy on easy off stays secure it does have lights led lights come here bud but unfortunately i messed them up when i was putting it on him so i'll demonstrate them on the next one oh. <laughs> um, american made uh, you can get it at spotlight.com uh, great company they're here in Vancouver actually oh really yeah but uh Amber's friends own it that oh, we okay. yeah that we hid for we, yeah, or they we, hid for we us trained at their, yeah at their warehouse their so great piece of equipment and if you're again working your dog shed hunting or off leash bird working or whatever you're doing if it's off leash especially in any kind of terrain like this it's I would highly 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 recommend it but uh that's the pro tip of the day. All right. Oh, and make sure you understand directions if you. Here, hold down a second. If you're working in, working with your partner and you don't quite understand uh, where he was going. I got him all tangled up. There we go. <laughs> no. Posers! Gotta check the hole. Gotta smell. What kind of smells are down in the hole? Whoop, no smells. We're out. Always a great sight to see. Their Swift Reservoir. Part of the reason is it's great is because it's beautiful. And the other part is you're done with that great big long <laughs> climb down. Which what did we figure it was? 4,200 feet. Oh, God. That was more than I realized. Two days in a row, I'm, my knees are kind of screaming at me right now, but we're almost back. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Apollo's doing it. You can do it. Show him you could do it. Send Apollo up over there. Over here? No, right around this one here. Oh. Here we go. Up. Watch. Up. Watch up. what Apollo does. Up. Around. There goes Apollo. Around. Around. Oh, now you do it. You do oh, it. Buddy. Go ahead. He did it. Come on. You could do it. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. My God. My God. <laughs> there you go. Uh, there you go. You can do it. <laughs> Good job, Calamity. She made it. Come here and talk to me. Come on. Oh. Oh, there we go. Look, we got the camera right there. And there is sunshine at our back. So I don't know if this is going to work out or not. But we have been in the mountains for two days. Trail camera. Oh, you think I might have a, a, some more uh, snacks on, on me, huh? No, I don't have any more snacks on me. But we've been on the mountains for two days, and we have done about 15 miles, and we have done up and down three, 4,000 feet elevation every single day. Oh, we've been going for it, haven't we? Good girl. Yeah, can't wait to get back home and see what is on these cameras. Other than you, you beautiful thing, you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>